In this video, we'll be covering how to use the Finder tool and some advanced selectors. The Finder tool can be found in the Columns tab, and it's what you use to actually select individual data. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, we're on a list page, but this Finder tool will be used throughout Recipe Creator. So to begin, you're going to give your column a name, say name, and then the extract um, field is the type of data you'll be extracting. So currently it's on text. So for this example, I think that's good. And now for the actual Finder tool, to activate it, you're going to simply click on it and you'll get a pop-up. And here you'll see a few instructions. Um, this will walk you through the process if you're new to it. You simply will just hover and press shift over individual pieces of data. So let's go ahead and do that now. And then once you've done that, you'll be prompted with a few suggested classes or element types. The element type is what defines the type of data. So for example, in H4, that describes that this is a header. And then the class name is simply just a styling class that's applied to the information. The fact that it's a styling class doesn't really matter much about when creating recipes. It's just merely the fact that we use this to identify that specific piece of information. So let's go ahead and select the class name. And one more thing about these two different selectors. The H4 is pretty generic, so you might end up selecting more items than you want. Classes are typically a little bit more specific, so that will give you a better chance of selecting the information you want. So to actually demonstrate that point, I'll go ahead and select, select additional items. So let's go ahead and pick Java developer, and I'll select a P tag, which is short for paragraph. And now, as you can see, there are now multiple P's on this page. So obviously, this tag would not be ideal. However, if I were to select an H4, that's a little bit more specific, so it works. But in the case of the P tags, you'll see that it has too many, so that is when we would suggest a title, or sorry, excuse me, the class title. So now you can see that we have selected just that individual piece of information. And now that we have that information, all you have to do is simply press confirm in the bottom right. Great. So now that is selecting the element with the class title. And to kind of get a little bit more um, elaborate with our different selectors, I'm actually going to show you our help page for Recipe Creator. If you were to navigate there and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that we have a list or a table of all these different types of extractors and their scenarios. And we'll actually run through a few of these real quick to kind of show the different um, type of selectors you can build and the, different, and the different combinations that are possible. So to begin, um, let's go ahead and just, so we've discussed the difference between tags. So we have the H tags, a P tag. An A tag is typically um, used for links. So if you ever see an A tag, um, that will be when you're trying to ex uh, extract a URL. And then we've discussed classes. So that is when you have some more specific information um, for the styling, and you can use it to um, extract the, the, the actual specific data that it's styling. And then occasionally, you'll see ID tags that have a, um, a, a number sign. And then let's see what else we have. So that's pretty much it in terms of different um, tags and classes. Next, we'll move on to some advanced selectors. So selectors are just essentially different um, tricks you can use to acquire information. So for the first one, you'll see how there is a space. So that simply allows you to build a longer and more advanced selector. So let's go ahead and make a demonstration of that. So let's say, let's, all right, so let's hover and tap shift. Oh, excuse me, let's at first start the finder process. So select the finder. And then let's do hover and shift. And let's go up a parent. And real quick, I'll point out that the parent is a tool we have that allows you to go up the HTML. And if, for example, you ever are never able to find a class, you can actually go up and it will offer you um, more additional classes or tags. So let's go ahead and keep going. And actually, let me backtrack real, real quick. Let me first point out that um, let's pretend that this P tag or this uh, title does not have a title class. Let's pretend that this is blank and all you're stuck with is a P. 
But um, you obviously don't want all those P's. So what you can do is actually go up a parent and it will be going up until you find a, a class that's available. So as you can see, now we have a class called basic info. So let's select that. And now, as you can see, we're extracting that whole container of information, which is not ideal. Um, right now, we just have this symbol class selector. But what you can actually do is type inside the selector input. And as I mentioned before, we had these P's available to us, but there was no class as we're pretending. So what you can do is actually type um, P following um, this class. So now, as you can see, we've selected the entire class. And then I did space like from our help page, and then I added the additional um, tag, which is P. So now that we're getting the P's inside this basic info class. And if I wanted, I could also add that class from before. Oh, sorry, I needed a space in there, now dot title. So as you can see, now we wrote in the title to kind of um, get back to the title. Um, and real quick, classes are indicated by a period so as you can see, I have a period before title and then a period before basic info. Tags, however, don't have anything. So if I were to do basic info with a tag, I would do just a P by itself, still with a space in between though. And now um, I'll show you one more trick because as you can see, we have different P's selected within our container. And let's say we wanted um, just one of them. So the way you can do that is actually by using our element arrows the element arrows essentially are what will apply a certain numbering system to your elements. So in this example, we have two elements in every container. And when you do the element arrow, arrow, it assigns a number to it, and then you can pick which number you want. So for example, this first one is EQ0. It always starts at 0, so remember that. And then if you want to get the next one, you go up one. And now that's EQ1, which is the second element in this container. So essentially, you just selected the element by its location or its number. And I will point out that this is sometimes risky, because if for some reason the page changes and you lose one of the numbered elements, then um, the data will be, it will kind of fall back and you may end up selecting um, the second element when the first element is gone, but your titles will still stay the same. So for example, if we have this be our title um, column, and if for some reason title is no longer available, the location will actually fall into the title place and the title of um, title, sorry, that gets a little confusing. So the title of the title will um, be applied to the location. So just a little bit about that. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to our next uh, selector. Um, so real quick, the comma, that will simply, um, rather than making a long trail of a selector, commas allow you to do multiple selectors, meaning let's say I wanted to get the headline. Oh, let's get out of that. So headline. Hold on, let me kind of start fresh again. So let's get rid of that. Do find. Then we can do dot headline. Actually, so I think this looks, that looks interesting because of the way it's selecting. Let's pick a different example. Let's do H4. Great. So now we're selecting the H4. But let's, for just example purposes, let's say I want to get the title as well. So let's do comma, and then I'll do dot title, which is the class. Great, so now I'm selecting the H4 and the title using the H4 tag and then a comma and then a dot title. So let's see some other examples we can go through. Um, the tilde or the plus will essentially allow you to select any additional elements. So let's say we are in the title, but we want to actually capture the location. So to get the location as well, just simply do a plus, and you'll see that we moved on to the second um, P. And I wonder if we do one more. Oh, it'll go away. But you can actually continue uh, with the um, the plus to get further and further if they're available in that container. Like for example, let's let's uh, hover and shift over 
this P, the clearance. And if I wanted to, I could do plus to go down to the experience and then one more plus to go down to the industry. And then the tilde, I believe, will get all of them. Yep, so the tilde will get the, re the remaining. And let's see what else we can quickly do. Um, another very valuable one is the one uh, right here, contains. So if for some reason you're never able to find a, a class or a title or a, f a combination of, um, sorry, a class or a tag, but if for some, some reason a class or a tag is not working for you, you can actually find elements by the actual text on the page. So for example, let's say um, I wanted to capture the industry. So to do that, just simply press the um, hover and tap shift, and then we'll find the tag. And so obviously there are a lot of tags. So what we can do to refine that is do um, colon, then type contains, and then open and close parentheses. And then you're gonna actually type the word you're looking for. And that is industry. Great, so now that we've selected that, um, or now that we've typed that in, we've we've been successful with selecting it. And I will say that this selected the entire um, element, so we're gonna get the word industry as well as the actual industry that they're in. So to get away from that, all you have to do is actually go down to one more level, similar to how we went from a container class to an individual class or an individual tag. So to do that, let's just hover and tap shift to see what it is. So it looks like it's a strong, so we actually type space and then strong. So now we're getting um, the P with the word that can turn, contains industry, and then we're typing space strong to go down one more level into the actual data that we're interested in. So that is a very um, useful one, and I recommend uh, looking into that and learning it. So let's do one more. Let's look at the this selector um, within within brackets. So this is a very useful one as well, and this actually allows us to look at one more piece of the finder. So you can actually look at the raw HTML of the page by simply clicking on the show HTML. <clears throat> so this is actually the HTML of the page, and you can go up the parent to kind of see more. Great, so what we can actually do is if there's for some reason ever a class or a selector not offered by a data miner, you can actually write in your classes um, manually. So let's try and see if we have an example here. Um, so there's nothing really that I could use that would be super challenging, but just for demonstration's sake, I will use a class. So let's pretend that, um, oops, let's pretend that the class is not given and we wanted to put it in manually. So you can actually look in the HTML and find a selector, and any of these are selectors. So anything with a, a purple word, and then a equals, and then inside quotations that is red, that is a selector, and you can actually use any of them, no matter if it says class, or ID, or something like item drop, um, data, something, there's a whole number of them. So what you can actually do is copy and paste the entire thing, and then all you have to do is um, make some square brackets and then paste it in between and then it gets you the information. Um, obviously that was not the greatest example so let's kind of pick something different. Let's do um, class experience so we can copy that and then paste it and again don't forget the um, square brackets and there we go. We were able to success, successfully extract the um, or capture the experience with our own manual selector. And again, to go down to the next level to get just the, the years, just simply tap, hover and tap shift to see what the element is. So it looks like we got a strong again. So let's do space, strong. Oh, strong. There, I just, just misspelled it. Great, so that is pretty much it for all of our um, all the really useful selectors we think we'll be you'll be using. Um, there's definitely plenty more out there, and there's definitely different kind of combinations. Um, so I would 
would recommend pretty much just practicing all these different types and becoming really strong with um, becoming familiar so then you can kind of get creative and um, play around with them and just become uh, much more um, capable of kind of thinking of different types of selectors on the fly. So that is pretty much it for this. It's, I know this has been a long video. <clears throat> I hope it's been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, actually, hold on real quick. I just want to cover one more thing. Um, I know it's simple, but I feel like it's necessary to complete the video. So after you have done all these different selectors, just don't forget to press confirm because confirming will lock it in where all of the typing of the uh, selectors, that's just kind of capturing it. But then once you press confirm, that's when you actually have the output available, as you can see right there. Great. So as I was saying, um, I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to email us. Our email is support at data-minor.io. And uh, thanks for watching. Okay, goodbye. Mm -hmm.